morning. Welcome to Jammies on this uh, Thursday, July 6th. I'm going to bounce around a little bit in scripture based on the conversation we had, a, a very good conversation we had in yesterday's Bible study. So I'm going to start in John's Gospel, and this is the first chapter. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples. And as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip and Nathanael said to him, We have found him about whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. So these first encounters are invitations. Come and see. Listen to what Jesus is saying. Um, see what Jesus is doing. Uh, as the Christian community, after following the death and resurrection of Jesus, obviously a question was, what does it mean to be a follower of Jesus? Uh, who, who is Christian? And I don't mean necessarily in drawing lines, who's in, who's out, but just, um, again, what are, what are those things that everybody who professes to follow Jesus believes? And so in seminary, so this is back in, you know, 96 to 2000, what I was introduced to was Paul's letter to the Corinthians, the 15th chapter, verses 3 to 5, as possibly an early creed, an early statement of beliefs by Christians. So Paul writes, For I handed on to you, as of first importance, what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the Twelve. So a very succinct summation of um, Jesus' death and resurrection, the purpose, or, or Paul attributing the purpose for the forgiveness of our sins. So, um, so we have that. But then a book came out just a few years ago, I've not yet read it, that points to Galatians 3, 26 to 28, if I get it here. For in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. As many as you were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. Now, like I said, I haven't read the book, so I can't tell you the author's conclusions, but the premise appears to be that one of the things unique to being a follower of Jesus was this breaking down of all human institutions that seek to divide and separate. And so we have here, I guess, three pearls, whether they all string together or not, you can be the judge, of Jesus' early invitations, come and follow me, see what I'm doing, hear, what I, hear the message I'm proclaiming. Then uh, at one point, Paul again says some of the essence of being a Christian is believing that Jesus died for our sins. He was buried, raised on the third day, uh, resurrected, and appeared to Cephas and the Twelve. And then this one from Galatians that describes the Christian community. And of course, other places and other and, and witnesses outside of Christianity. Um, I don't know if it was Tertullian, but uh, one of the early Roman historians in viewing from the outside the Christian communities and see how they love one another. So it wasn't see all the great doctrines they understand, see how wonderful their argumentation is on philosophy, it's see how they love one another, which doesn't seem to be a bad thing and bad way to be described. So let's pray. Holy God, thank you for this new day. Uh, thank you for the beauty of your creation. Thank you for the gift of scripture to enlighten us. Thank you for the wonderful gift of community to share different perspectives and, and, and go to a deeper understanding. And not so it all resides in our head, but so that it transforms our hearts as well. And that we too can be viewed as a community where people can exclaim, see how they love one another. So help us to do that. Um, 
help us also show another great mark of Christian community. That is when we fail, uh, there is repentance, there is forgiveness, there is new life. So just as bones heal even stronger after a break, so too help our communities um, remain and grow stronger. This we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I was walking around the, the garden in the front yard this morning, and one of the things I'm, I'm starting to take pleasure in is that some of my native plants are beginning to reseed elsewhere in the yard. That may give some people fits and starts that everything doesn't just stay in its proper place. But to me, it is a sign that the garden area is beginning its naturalization process um, that I have initiated by removing invasives and other things. Um, but at some point, I truly hope to just let it be and do what it will. The, the plants will find the spot that they're happiest and thrive. And um, we'll see what that looks like in five years. So God's peace be with you. Bye-bye.